Hi, this is Bob Sorrentino from Italian Roots and Genealogy, and I'm here today with Michelle Cole, and we're going to talk about her search for her Italian ancestors. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Uh, so let's start off with um, why you went on the search, because I understand that your, I guess your parents aren't Italian. I think it was your grandmother that's Italian, correct? Yes, it's my grandmother. Actually, it's kind of a little funny story. Um, I only got into genealogy probably about five years ago. Um, and the reason I did was because my husband got me an ancestry subscription because my kids are getting older and he said, I know you're going to have empty nest. <laughs> so here you go. <laughs> um, and he was correct. Um, but I absolutely love it. Um, I can't believe the things I've found out about my family. I had no idea. My grandmother on my mother's side um, is Ita Italian. Um, that's where I had no idea she had nine brothers and sisters. <laughs> so that started me on the journey. And I just haven't stopped since. <laughs> I, I know it's a it's a disease um, yes. <laughs> or an addiction, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it's very addictive. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, that's uh, my my mother's. Uh, my mother had nine in her family, so it's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for us growing up, I, of course, knew them all, so it was a yeah. uh, crazy town back then. <laughs> so, um, so now, did, did you find out what part of Italy she was from? Yes, actually, uh, my mother did know um, that they were from Vico Equest. Um, so that was great. Um, and I put together, you know, I actually was amazed and very happy. Um, that so many of my Italian American cousins had done DNA tests. So when I got DNA results, I it just seemed like my whole list was my Italian American family. <laughs> and as I started contacting them, I kept getting more and more information. So it was fantastic. So you um, didn't know. So you didn't know any of them, basically. No, I knew that I had two uncles um, growing up, um, but they really. One didn't have ch children, and one did have children, but he, they had moved away. Um, but I didn't. I only knew about the two brothers that my grandmother had, um, so I knew about no one else. <laughs> so my mother knew a few, but not that many, because my grandmother was ninth, um, so she was the ninth child. So, and the first three were born in Italy, um, so it was a big gap in age. And yeah, and that's not dissimilar to, to to most of us that have the large families. The same thing with yeah. my mom and even my dad's family. It was like twenty years between mm -hmm. the oldest and the youngest. Yeah, uh, and, and you know, my mother had had uh, nieces and nephews almost her age. Yep, yep. Uh, it's like I said, it made things very confusing when we were growing up, and uh, yes. uh, everybody's everybody's somebody's cousin, aunt, or uncle, or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're really um, close in age. <laughs> and so, you know, reading through your notes, uh, you kind of went down the wrong path because you were, and this is, I think, good advice for people. You latched on to somebody's ancestry chart, chart that I guess wasn't accurate. Yes. Um, there were a few people that have a certain, um, certain parents for my great grandfather, Francesco Gargiulo, that is very incorrect. Um, and actually, it was a combination. Um, I do have a first cousin that I don't know very well. Um, he grew up in Florida when I was in New Jersey. Um, but I had sent him the tree that I put together and he said to me, Michelle, I think we qualify for dual citizen citizenship. And I was like, wait, what's that? Um, but through that, he went and got the birth certificate of our great grandparents and, or our great grandfather. And that's how I realized, wait a second, this isn't correct. <laughs> Um, but it was a combination too, because I had a cousin, um, that we could not figure out our relationship. He lived in Arizona and I thought we could not figure it out to save our lives. Um, and it was because I had the wrong second great grandparents. And as soon as I found out who the actual great grandparents, second great grandparents were, boom, we knew we were thir third cousins. <laughs> so it was, it was really, it was fantastic. I, I know when you make those connections, it's um, really amazing. Yeah. And, you know, I, I I did that, you know, some of it through Facebook because um, I didn't know that I had any cousins in Italy. Nobody ever talked about it. So 
you know, when I started finding them, that was that was really cool. So now have you found cousins in Italy? Not yet. And that is my quest. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Yes, I'm determined. I will. I'm sure that I have cousins there. Um, and nobody has kept in touch um, with anyone that I know of. I have tried to reach out. You probably know some cousins reply and great, you know, a lot and some don't. And um, so, yeah, not everybody replies to me. And I think I'm sure there are some over there. Yeah, probably. You just, you know, you just have to, you know, hunt them down and yes. you never know what, you know, once you find one, you start mm -hmm. getting all of these other connections. And I, I just, you know, heard from somebody a couple of weeks ago that I never knew. Um, ah. And one exciting. of the things, one of the things I did is I, I started a Facebook group just for, um, you know, my cousins from both sides of the family. So oh. as I find people, mm -hmm. I add them to that group and, you know, they'll come up with photos uh, that, you know, we've never seen. So, um, Fantastic. You, you never know what's going to, what's going to come out of it. And, and yeah. Um, you know, the, the picture of my grandmother behind me from the book cover, sh that was sent to me not too long ago okay. from his, let's see, Nicholas, my first cousin once removed. Mm -hmm. And his mother had photographs from her father that nobody ever seen. And my grandmother had sent postcards uh, to Italy in 1919, 1920 wow. uh, with her handwriting on the back. Oh, and nice. so these were missing for a hundred years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, once you make that, once you find that connection, it's really, it's really fabulous. Yeah. I um, definitely hope to. <laughs> so now, so, so I have to ask, so now your grandmother, she didn't, did she marry an Italian or she married a non-Italian? No, she married actually, and um, through genealogy, I knew my grandfather was Danish, but I had no idea until I started that he was actually from Denmark. <laughs> um, he only came over when he was about 19. So um, it's so interesting, the things that you find, because he was Lutheran, um, and then found out that their marriage certificate, um, of course, back then, Lutheran, Catholic, wasn't looked upon. They had to get married in the back of the Catholic Church because right. he was Lutheran. <laughs> so, so yeah. So, um, and that's really unusual for somebody from that era to marry a, a non-Italian. Yes, yes. Nineteen, I guess, nineteen forty-two. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in my mother's family, everybody married Italian except for my youngest uncle, and mm -hmm. and my aunt Margie was uh, from Scottish descent. But everybody else was, you know, everybody else was a uh, was Italian. Um, yeah. And funny, you know, you mentioned the thing about the, you know, the the back of the church. Um, my my cousin Marilyn, she married uh, a Protestant, mm -hmm. and I remember that this must have been, yeah, maybe I was twelve or thirteen or something like that. So probably sixty four, maybe sixty five. Um, and they couldn't get married at the altar. They had to get married, not in the back of the church, but they, they couldn't, they had to get married at the altar, altar rail. Oh, okay. So where most weddings, two Catholics who got married in, right in front of the altar, mm -hmm. they couldn't go that far. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's mind boggling, <laughs> but there you go. Uh, but uh, yeah, and, and um, I found the, uh, on the Antonati, I found the, uh, I don't know if it was, it was, it was, wasn't the church record. It was a public, it was a state record of my first great, it was my second great grandparents on the Sorrentino side. And um, it's like 34 pages. Oh, wow. And it goes on and on and on. And they named this and they named that. And the only thing I could figure is my great grandmother's family. Uh, were lawyers. Oh. So they had everything but the kitchen sink in this marriage uh, contract almost. It's almost like I was a contract. Say almost like a prenuptial. Yeah, yeah. And even crazy stuff like, like uh, you know, he, he swears that he was never in the military. I don't know why that would have anything to do with it. 
But it's this, I've never seen anything like it. And I asked people around and they said they've never seen anything like it either. <laughs> Probably so gave now, you a lot of information. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. More information than they certainly needed. Um, so now have you, have you, um, you know, used the Antonati at all? Have you been able to find anything on there? Or? It's so hard when it, you go back that far. Yes, but um, it has. It hasn't been that long that I've really known how to navigate through Antonati, um, but I spend every evening on it. I have been able to build my tree, and yes, I have found great uncles, great aunts. Um, I've been able to go probably the late 1700s, which is probably as far as I'll get yeah, there. Yeah. Um, but it has been fantastic because eventually I do want to go to Italy. And if I have to, um, I want to hire somebody to see if there is family in the area. So by, by doing all the branches, um, I should be able to find, but yeah, I'm hoping to, to, uh, bump into somebody that way. <laughs> um, yeah. And if you do, I, I know several really good people that, over there that you could trust oh, and great. um Thanks. i actually had i actually had because i was stuck on the sorrentino side um my mother's family for some reason this little town in puglia almost all the records on it the antonati and and i was and i found like 150 records or something like that the sorrentino i couldn't find it all and, and i hired somebody and he um he found me uh a bunch of stuff and that's how i found that's he's the guy who found that you know long lengthy marriage contract. Um, that is that is true though because Antonati for me for Vico Aquinas is missing from 1865 to 1900. So other than my great grandparents, I can't really get their full siblings because that of that time period. Um, so right. and and you know I interviewed um, I've interviewed people from there a couple of times from Family Search. And they photographed almost everything. Um, they're still doing more, but it's the indexing that's taking so much time. Yeah. Because they need people to volunteer and go in there and index all of these records. So I wish I could find someone because I'd be happy to help index. I'm looking through them now anyway, but I haven't been able to find anyone. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So the, I'm glad you asked. I could send you, I'll send you the link. And I'll actually, I'll actually put it in the, um, in the blog too. Um, I interviewed the guy who actually, I don't know if he still is. Um, and in fact, you know, his name, I think his last name is Cole, actually, if oh, really? I remember correctly. Uh, and he's got this Italian accent. Oh. <laughs> so funny. Um, but he he explains how to do it. And I think um, I think the link is even in that post. Oh, um, okay. Where you could go in there. And, you know, the the toughest thing about it when you, and I tell this to people all the time, you have to check the spellings because uh, this, it's so hard to read the writing and you can't fault the people who are doing the indexing. They, they put in what they think it's supposed to be, but mm -hmm. uh, I have a grandmother from, a uh, great grandmother from Switzerland and her name is Moore, M-O-H-R. And okay. it's on the Antonati as M-O-L-E-R. Okay. <laughs> and you know i found it because i was look i found something else and then i saw that pop up on the side and i was like wait a second that's probably her and mm -hmm. and sh you know sure enough it was um so now we have you found any interesting occupations uh going through some of the uncles and most aunts? of them nothing really i mean we do have landowners um but a lot of like semen um that's pretty much seems to be the biggest, um, the biggest occupations. I think I have found a stonemason, but not, but that's pretty much it right now. <laughs> but that's pretty, the, you know, if you found where if you found somebody who's a landowner or a property owner, that means they had some status in the town. So again, if you if you hire somebody, they'll be able to find stuff. I'm sure. It's funny you say that because there is a what do you call it, rumor <laughs> um, that part of the family did have money or status or something. So it'll be interesting to go down that path and see what that is at some point. Um, yeah. And, you know, my mother's side, they're all, they're all farmers and seamstresses and farmhands. And, you know, my, my, um, my father's side, there were his, 
from his father were some attorneys, and then my grandmother was from noble families. But that's where you see, you know, property owner, and and then one or two cases actually says occupation rich person. No, <laughs> <Imagine. That's> funny. <laughs> Could you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> Which I didn't think was an occupation. I thought it just <laughs> she had a lot of money. But, um, yeah, that's great. <laughs> and and then also if if they have you know Don or Adana in front of the name again that means that they had some status because they didn't put that in just for the you know uh, actually I didn't know that and there are I I found probably yeah. about two that have that so yeah I'm if if it look. says you know you know Don Giovanni or okay. you know, Donna Giuseppino or something like that that means that they had some some sort of status okay um definitely come across and, that once or twice. And, you know it kind of it's if they're just common people it won't it won't say that oh okay yeah, great so, so you can go back and look and you yes know, i will <laughs> um and see see what you can find and and then you know my grandmother's case my great grandmother uh she's got probably 10 or 12 names strung together wow and and, and i asked somebody once and i said you know, I don't, I don't get it. I don't see that on other records. And they said, well, the, the nobles had a, they, they did that and they put in different saints names and, um, uh, names from the Bible. Yes. For some strange reason. And yeah. Not for them, but there are some. There is one branch that every daughter, the first name is Maria. Every single one. Yeah, and that's not on, that's not uncommon either. But they didn't use the name. They didn't use that. Right. They used the second name. They yes. Used, yeah. Like my yeah. grandmother is Maria Amelia, and my other grandma is Maria Luisa, but she went by the name of Luisa. Mm -hmm. uh, and the interesting thing on, uh, I've heard people call my grandmother the one picture behind me. Uh, her name's Luisa or Luisa in okay. Italy, and um. I've seen people refer to her as Regina. And I asked over there and I said, I, why are they calling her Regina? And my cousin was trying to explain it to me and I wasn't comprehending, comprehending until I, he sent me the, the card. Mm -hmm. And her, she signed her name to her father, Gigina, G-I-G-I-A, oh, right? So mm -hmm. that must have been how he referred to her for Whatever reason, because there's nobody in the family by that name. Mm -hmm. But that must have been what her father called her. Yeah. So that explained mm -hmm. why people referred to her as Regina, but it wasn't Regina. Yeah. Now, maybe, you know, Regina, I guess, is like, you know, queen or something like that. So maybe this Regina was oh. a short yeah. form of that. Again, we'll never know. Uh, we'll always get it. You get various nicknames in your family that stick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they told me, they told me too that um, my cousin told me that my grandmother always called my father Little Nicky in English. She referred mm -hmm. to him as Little Nicky because his grandfather was Nicola. Mm -hmm. um, my father, of course, born in New Jersey. He, you know, he's anglicized. They used Nicholas. Um, but then he... Nicola told me that when the grandfather is alive, they never refer to the the son or the grandson by that name. They also they always put at least in Naples anyway. They always put the the diminutive after it. So he told me that he was Nicolino. His grandfather was Nicola, so he was Nicolino. That's what my father would have been in Italy, Nicolino. But because yeah. they were in America, they called she called him Little Nicky. Yeah. And I thought I thought it was always because he was the the youngest in the family. But now, it was it's probably different. because out of respect for her father, that's what they called him, mm -hmm. Little Nicky. <laughs> yeah. You love hearing and, those stories. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's you know it's it's so interesting. And the other the other thing that was fun with with him was uh he's my father's first cousin um because my grandfather my great-grandfather had two families 30 years apart oh okay so 
he's actually younger than me. But he said, I'm in Naples, I'm actually your uncle. He said, because I'm your father's first cousin. Yeah. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah. And, and you know, that's, you know, a lot of uh, Italians, we always called our father's cousins, the older cousins, aunt or uncle or, or things like that. Mm -hmm. So now I have to ask, did you research the Danish family? We'll be right back. Experience Italy like never before, traveling with a scheduled group or create your own bespoke tour with friends with PhilItaly.com. Pack your bags and follow Phil. That's www.PhilItaly.co. I have. I haven't gone too far. Uh, when I first started, I had never heard the term um, petrionomics. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, um, but so it's very interesting. You know, the first name um, becomes your last name. Um, so that part is very interesting. <laughs> so I haven't gotten too far, but I haven't I haven't done a lot of work on that yet. Um, I've spent most of my time on Italy right now, especially because my mother is still with us. Um, so I can get any questions I have. I can ask her. Um, my father's not with us anymore. Um, and um, she doesn't, I, there aren't as many Danish cousins that I know of. Um, there's so many more um, Italian that I just started there. <laughs> yeah, well. But she, she definitely does have family in, in Denmark too. So. Oh, well, that's cool. That's pretty it cool. Is, I've never yeah. been there, but uh, I'm sure it's a really neat place. Yeah. Uh, I've been close to there, but I've never actually got, I always wanted to go because I, I think it's a really cool place. Um, I have a lot of places on my bucket list now for travel. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. I've got, well, you know, our first trip to Italy was 25 years ago, and we just got back this year. We had to cancel a couple of times because of yeah. COVID. We were yeah. supposed to go uh, in April of 2020, just oh. just after, you know. But it, it kind of turned out it was a blessing in disguise because other things came um apparent after you know as we were waiting and more finding more and more people and things like that so i, mm -hmm. I guess in the long run it was uh, the thing but uh mm -hmm. yeah you definitely you definitely have to go back i'd like to go to lucerne because i never knew i had a swiss grandma oh i've been in lucerne and yeah yeah so uh, very pretty mm -hmm. I, i'm sure and uh they that's a catholic canton at least it was. I don't know if it still is, but it was. I don't know what's going on there now. But they would send soldiers to around Europe mm -hmm. to augment the different armies. So that's how they wound up in Naples. Oh, okay. Yeah, crazy, right? I never knew that. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, but you always went... find things by accident, you know? Mm -hmm. I uh, I traveled for work um, in my early 20s, and I wish I knew then, <laughs> or I wish, yeah, yeah. Um, because I was in Switzerland, and um, I would have definitely, you know, I didn't realize all of my, pretty much all of my family is, is Europe, so <laughs> I wish I had known then. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I know. I did the same thing with me. Sometimes I, I'm like, oh, boy, if I knew that. Like the first time we yeah. went to Italy, I didn't know any of this. It was 25. I wasn't doing this. And I didn't know that my families lived, you know, right down the road from the train station. So we took the train to pick up a car to go to Sorrento. And we pro probably could have just walked to where they lived. Aww. <laughs> um, but, but, you know. Now we know. So, so how about your dad's family? Now, where's your dad from? Actually, my dad is from um, pretty, pretty German. Um, I actually, it has been fantastic. Um, I bumped into a group um, that there's about 50 of us that um, we figured out we're all related. Um, the last name is Schmidt. So it's Schmidt or Smith in the U.S. or it's, you know, got a few variations, but we're all over the U.S. And but we all descend from well, we've gotten to like fifth, sixth, seventh grandparent, like great grandparents. Um, so that is fantastic. Um, 
that's my maternal, uh, my dad's mother. Um, and then my dad's father is from Hungary. Um, and I'm having a heck of a time trying to find anything there. <laughs> I think I've gone to my great grandparent or my great great grandparent. That's it so far. <laughs> So you're like everything. You're a mix of everything. Oh, your your know. your ancestry chart must be like all yes. over the place. <laughs> What's even funnier is my husband is Irish and English. <laughs> so our kids are big mix. <laughs> now is his yeah, that's like you have everything you could think of. Uh now was his does his, did his family come here like early on? Do you know when his family came to the States? There is someone in Canada, actually, um, that did a lot of research on the Cole family. Um, and so it looks like the um, first person was a fisherman, um, late 1700s, that came to Canada and then came down the, because we're from New Jersey, mm -hmm. uh, so came down the coast um, and wound up settling in New Jersey. Um, and then the Irish... Um, the Irish, I want to say they came second. It be, they came because of the potato famine. Oh, okay, um, yeah. So, um, but I haven't, I know their records, I haven't done a lot with their records yet, but I know that their records are a little bit harder because of uh, fires and things like that there, so. Um, so eventually. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, my, um, I had to do my ex-wife just because I was so curious about it because I knew that her family was, same thing, her, her mom was Irish, her father was German. Ooh. And um, and I started finding going going back, and um, I got her mom's family back to Ireland. Uh, her, I think it was, I'm not sure. I can't remember. I think it may have been her dad's family, but I'm not sure. It may have been her mother. But I found out that they had Dutch in Ooh. New York in the 1600s, Ooh. and in fact, uh, her third or fourth great grandfather sold Rikers Island to New York. Wow. So the, the name was uh, Van Ricken or something like that, something okay. in that vicinity. And uh, they, in the 1800s, he sold Rikers Island. Wow. To the, to the, to the state, I guess, or the city. Um, it's amazing the things, yeah, that you uncover. And, and the, they had farms, her, her mom's family, going back, had farms throughout Hempstead, if you're familiar with Nassau, right? Mm -hmm. Throughout Hempstead, Suffolk County. Yep. Um, the, the, one of the family names was Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T, and they were this, several branches of them. And mm -hmm. Same thing, they came from like upstate. So yeah, when you start digging, you know, finding Americans and Irish and especially English, so much easier than finding Italians. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and I'm stuck. the the Irish and the English is so much better. I can read the language. Yeah, well, that too. Yeah, that's another plus. <laughs> Between Danish and German and Italian and Hungarian and yeah, I'm like trying to you know get those words, those key words. Uh, but you know, when you when you start getting familiar with the Antonati, you, you kind of start to pick up on the the main words. You know, you do. Yeah, you pick it up, and and like you said, the only problem sometimes is um, the handwriting. You're like, you know, what is that letter? And yeah, that's the only. Yeah, I'm my all all my records are between the person who writes really neat, the two people who write really neat, and mine's in the middle with the person who doesn't can't can barely write. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, so now, what I always ask people because I'm always curious because my family thinks I'm nuts. What does your family think? What did you think? I guess your husband must be killing himself because he opened up this can of worms, right? <laughs> yes. Everybody thinks I'm crazy. Yes. <laughs> um, I actually, um, so during the, pan I'm actually a nurse um, and I've taken, I've worked through the pandemic and um, I decided to take a little bit of time off. Um, so I decided to go back to school. So I'm taking some genealogy classes right now. Um, so yes, everybody thinks I'm out of my mind. <laughs> I'm like, but I like it. It's great. It's not even homework. I enjoy it. Um, so yeah, so they think I'm a little crazy. But my kids are very excited um, when they found out about the dual citizenship. Um, they think that is very cool. Um, and really, they're the only reason why I think it would be amazing to have. Um, it would you know, potentially give them opportunities at some point, maybe, or great grandchildren, great grandchildren, who knows? 
Um, well, I'm, I'm actually doing the same thing, and for the same reason. Uh, you know, I, I'm obviously a lot older than you, and uh, but I'm doing it for the same reason, so the so the kids could have it, especially mm -hmm. it's especially advantageous uh, for school. Yeah. The school is so cheap over there. It's, un it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter's a, a nurse in Texas now. She oh, she was okay. doing travel. She was doing travel nursing uh, for the last couple of years. She got a degree in Florida when we were in Florida. And um, oh, that's where I am. She, she loves it, but she's she's going for her uh, nurse practitioner now. Oh, good for uh, her. That's great. She she wants to uh, she wants to do psychiatric. Mm -hmm. So I said to my wife, I said, yeah, she'll be, she'll be able to pop us full of. <laughs> we'll you better watch to... out. She'll, she'll <laughs> analyze, you know. That's what I said. Yes. Oh. We'll be getting all kinds of things stirred into the drink when we're uh, 85 years old or something like that. Here, try and take this. Take the blue pill today. Tomorrow you take the red pill. Yeah. Um, and my kids are adopted. So I've done her family too. And her family, she's mostly English and Irish. And I got her way back i got her back to not the irish so much but the english side way back to the we i don't know 1200s or something like that nice. uh, very lucky to be able to find those kinds of things yeah um and my wife and son uh matt's father's from um puerto rico and my wife's father's from puerto rico and they're fifth cousins oh wow so cool you know, you you find it's, it's I, I think this is really great for um, adopted people um, yes. because I, I know there's a lot of people kind of worried about the DNA and how they're going to use it and what am I going to find. Yeah. But I think it's been a big help for a lot of people who didn't know who they were. And I had a cousin, in fact, that found it, uh, found out. And uh, I had a, I have a good friend who found out he had an older adopted brother. Wow. He's, nice. He had no idea. He, he, again, you know, you have to try and think. Yeah. Uh, he thinks his father may have had an affair before he married uh, his mother. Mm -hmm. Back in, like, I guess the early, the 40s or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he, had, he has a brother. That is really, yeah. I, I find DNA amazing. I know not everyone has the same opinion and I respect that, but it, it's definitely amazing. And it helps so much with genealogy, at least, you know, the first few generations. <laughs> um, yeah. And there's, there's, I don't know if you've done it, living DNA. If you send it there, I think, I think it's still free. They do the maternal and paternal side. Mm -hmm. So they don't I... just do the autosomal. They, they give you a breakdown from your mother and father. Okay. And they go back ten to twenty thousand years. Okay. So they show you where the the, the uh, haplogroups began. I have done the mtDNA. Is that? Oh, you have. Okay. Yes, I have, and actually, that follows my Italian line. Um, because well, yeah, it would have to, of course, it's mother to mother. Yeah. Yep, it's all mother. Um, and I am haplogroup H, which is very um common, except for I. That's it. I'm just H. I'm not any of the subgroups. Um, so that's a little bit interesting because there doesn't seem to be. I'm either going to be called something later or I, I just seem to be in my own little world. Yeah. At the moment. <laughs> like, I didn't think there was something I, with that. I don't know. And I didn't even realize there weren't any subgroups anymore. I thought everybody was in some sort of subgroup. Yeah. And I'm just an H and I only have one person I match with. Probably like I don't know. It's, I think it's three or five generate like three or five um, mutations. So it's not even really close. And so I'm like, oh, I'm in my own little world here. <laughs> so. And so where uh, so where are they? Where's the haplo that haplogroup located now? Where is it? From? It's um it looks to be um, Greece and Spain. So which actually might make a little bit of sense because um, I don't know exactly, but my um, great grandmother's maiden name was Verde. And Verde, you know, is a Spanish word, green. So mm -hmm. I just thought, well, well maybe, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, I uh, see now my mother's uh, line, it's almost 95% in the Caucasus. Mm. I can't figure that out for life. 
Hmm. There's no, there's, there's, I, I think there's a little maybe Greece, Greek or something like that. Mm-hmm. But it's 95% in Caucasus, Russia, you know, that kind of Armenia kind of area. Yeah, that's interesting. No idea how wow. that happened. And of course, I have the father line. And that makes a little bit more sense because there's, they're in Greece and um, Switzerland, Sardinia, and a little bit of Spain. So that all kind of makes and it, But mountains, like mountain people. Yeah. Wow. Um, so that's that's pretty cool for people who don't know. There is another path that you need to check. You need to check the, you know, if you're a woman, you get the mother line. If you're male, you get both lines. And then the other one that's really interesting is um, my true ancestry. I don't know if you heard of them. And no. you could send it in there. And what they do, they, they, they've gone throughout the world to archaeological digs. Oh. And they match your DNA to these digs. So oh wow. So, so they could that's... they could trace you back to like um to 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 plague in southern Italy, right? To somebody wow. in the plague in southern Italy. Or they could trace yeah. you back. So they actually they actually trace you back to the um to the Iceman. Okay. Depending on what they can Depending find on, and yeah. what they match. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's very interesting. Isn't that cool? Yes, very. And they're doing more and more all the time. It, it I think they do the initial one I think is free. It does get a little pricey if you want to keep going. Um yeah. I kind of stopped in the mid range, you know. But they do have sales. Um because the more you pay, obviously, then they the more matching that they do. But yeah. Even if you do the free one, you get a kind of neat picture of uh they 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 tell you where mm-hmm. and they tell you when mm-hmm. Very so nice. they could tell you that you you know you're from crusader in the 1300s wow that is so amazing the, yeah i'm looking forward to when they can do other things like and i know they're getting there as far as like hair or something like that to pull the dna too because I have like my merits line as far as that's my maiden name. My, um, my merits line has stopped. Um, there's no, um, male descendant. So, um, and I can't, we seem to be like the only ones, but I'm, we have hair, um, you know, from like my father, I'd love to get that tested at some point and see if there's any, you know, better matches or, or something. So, so I'll be looking forward to that. (laughs) And that's that's interesting because um yeah, that's a that's a, a great thing to do. I wish they, they did do that. I mean they can do it. It maybe it's just too expensive for these companies. It to, is right to, now, to but as that. it yeah. as it gets better, I am I'm looking forward to that. So Because you know the Elizabethans, I think it was the Elizabethans or the Victorians, one of them used to they used to carry the hair around in a locket. Mm-hmm. Well, so many people do like the first haircut and you that's keep true. it yeah. and you and keep yeah, it. that's yeah. what yeah. That's exactly what we have. It's like a first haircut and things like that. So it's like, yeah, I oh, think okay. actually they're doing it from dead people, but <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> um, they were a strange, they were a strange could... bunch. Yeah, yes, they passed before I could get as you know the <laughs> sample. <laughs> oh. uh, I guess I guess I guess they had their their reasons for for doing that. I can't imagine what it was, but I, I suppose they did. Uh, um, but well, yeah. Like you said, we are a crazy bunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, this has been a lot of fun for sure. I enjoyed yes. this conversation a lot. And, uh, okay. you know, Thank keep you. searching yes. and, uh, you know, keep us posted on what's going on. I will. <laughs> All right. Have a great day. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye.